Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. Today's video is the second part of my router cutting templates series. This is the final part in the series, it's only a two part video. If you're interested in the first part of this video or haven't seen it yet, please be sure to click on the link in the description below for part one. In part one we talked about cutting multiple layers of aluminum using router cutting templates and drilling your tooling holes and relief cut holes so that everything was lined up perfectly in preparation to cut on the router. In this part of the video, we are actually going to cut the material out on the router and take a look at how that goes. This footage was shot a long time ago before I had any good lighting in the shop and before I had a decent camera, so please bear with me on the vintage quality of the footage, but as before, I think the information is the important part, so let's get into it. Okay, so I have just an inexpensive Craftsman router table. This is a portable router table. I don't even have it bolted down to the workbench. And what I've got is another inexpensive, this is a flush cut router bit. So if you can see at the top of the bit here, there's a little pilot bearing. And that pilot bearing will follow my cutting template up here at the top. So the reason we have two pieces of wood is because we have to get the metal up off the, the bed of the router. And uh, there's no way to securely fasten that to the cutting template without having a through bolt all the way through that and tend to hold that in place. And uh, there's a couple ways that you can do this on some of the smaller parts where you simply just have a pilot hole like in the flap around arm. You can actually just drill a wood screw down through the 8 inch pilot hole for the flap around arm and drill it to the block of wood below. But if you don't have some way to tightly hold these two pieces of wood uh, together, what will happen is the two thicknesses of wood will have a tendency to wobble back and forth very so very slightly as you move the material around the router bit. And what will happen is the bottom piece of wood will gradually get carved out by this router bit and each part you make will successively be smaller and smaller and smaller because you'll push against the top bearing or the top surface and the bottom surface will want to push away from the cutting surface and you'll end up with a just ever so slightly smaller and smaller part as these things start to wobble back and forth and the, and the two uh, cutting templates will just very slightly slide back and forth like this. So I learned that the hard way. I cut probably three flap around arms out of eighth inch aluminum, which is very expensive aluminum to be scrapping. I cut three of those before I realized what was happening. And uh, by the time I cut the last one, these pilot holes, I only had them secured by locating pins. They weren't clamped together. And so they started to walk back and forth and as that happened my part was no longer in spec and so I had to make new cutting templates and uh, figure out a way to bolt them tightly together through an eighth inch pilot hole and then cut some new ones. So I was able to salvage some of the aluminum for other parts but I, I had to scrap a good portion of it and that, that's a very expensive mistake so make sure that your cutting templates are exactly the same and that you're using two of them securely clamped together Watch out for plywood. You'll see here there's there's little biscuits that kind of fly out of the plywood. There is not every piece of wood is a solid piece that's in the layer of plywood. And so you want to make sure that your pilot bearing does not end up down into one of those wedges causing a divot in your material. And on this particular stack up I actually have to lower my pilot bearing just a touch to clear area that I'm talking about. That should be good. So. So you can see there, there's a little uh, biscuit or um, just a place where the material is missing from this layer of sandwich. And plywood is like that. So you'll want to take a good look around the perimeter of your cutting templates to make sure that, you know, wherever your pilot bearing is going to rest on this edge, that it doesn't fall into one of those grooves and, and some of the, if you buy a larger bit they'll have larger pilot bearings and things like that so you can avoid it but this is just a bit that I had the pilot bearing is rather small so I don't want it to fall into that groove so uh, some safety tips on working with the router you're not going to be able to use the uh, cutting fence really the guard it, it's just not practical to use that you have to kind of watch what you're doing all the way around it uh, I don't even have good lighting where I'm working here which is probably a, a big problem for for us I can see just fine but some better light would be better. I need to put another light in over here. And I don't want to go with the rotation of it. I want to go against the rotation of it. 
if you're using a router table, you should have markings on it and everything else that'll show you what way you're supposed to go. The other thing is because a router tends to want to bite in, we see we have quite a lot of aluminum here to cut off around the edge. The router bit, uh, if you're not going nice and slow and steady, it'll have a tendency to bite in and catch the piece. And uh, people lose fingers all the time using routers incorrectly. So what I advocate, and I'll show you with my glove off, I'm gonna leave my glove on for the demonstration. What I advocate while you're holding onto your pieces is to hold with your knuckles. Leave your thumb down on the table, well uh, on the other side of the, from the bit, and just hold the piece with your knuckles and kind of guide it with your knuckles pushing down on the table. That way if the piece gets yanked from your hand, your knuckles aren't holding onto it, you're not gripping the piece and you won't drag a finger into the, into the bit because the first place anything is going to go when the router bit catches is right into the router bit. Be careful doing that. Hold on with your knuckles if you can, uh, or at least try to stay at the opposite side of the cutting. You don't want to be holding up here as you're going around the cutting bit. Using your knuckles in a, in a controlling fashion like this, and then just using your thumbs to guide the piece around will, will save it if it rips and yanks out of your hand, and it might even happen here on the video. If it does, I'll leave it in. It's just going to pull away from your knuckles and your hands are still tight against your body. You do have to kind of get up over top of it to see what you're doing sometimes, but it's a pretty straightforward process. The other most important part besides gloves, of course, are safety glasses. This thing th throws router chips everywhere. And uh, I've got it in a corner of my shop here that, that is butted up against the wall so the chips stay largely contained on two sides of it, but there's probably going to be chips flying at the camera. I've had pieces that if I hadn't been wearing safety glasses would have taken my eye out several times during the course of this project just because they fly everywhere and there's no good way to contain them. So I'm going to let the video roll. We'll cut these out and see how they look. All right, well already we had a problem. We've got to raise the router bit, the cutting bit up just a little bit. It was actually getting caught in between the pilot bearing and the cutting surface. Let's give that another shot, shall we? You can see I actually went around the perimeter of the, of the cutting template twice. Uh, there tends to be a little bit of chaff that kind of gets stuck to it, uh, or at least what I call chaff. It's just a little remnants, uh, like, like burrs that just kind of get stuck to it. And I like to go around a second time just to kind of clean up any, any uh, of that and to make sure that I was holding the pilot bearing up against the cutting template the entire time. A lot of times you'll end up just coming away from that pilot bearing ever so slightly as the metal wants to cut through the material it kind of wants to go its own direction so if you're not holding consistent pressure up against that cutting template and the bit comes away a little bit you want to make sure that you've cut it flat to the template so we take this uh, take that out and uh, see what we have here so these all should be pretty, pretty identical I did notice that on the upper flange I have one that we talked about watching what you're doing a little bit when making sure that your material is overhanging that that edge. You can see here I've got a couple of millimeters I've lost there so that's a scrap part and that's a, a big no-no. I can use this for other material but between the one that I couldn't use in the drilling and the one the one that I just cut there I actually had two pieces that I can't even use so be very careful when you're using cutting templates that you get enough material on the aluminum to surround the cutting template so you can cut a perfect 
perfect match. But this is a really good one here. We have uh, this here is very good. It's got the right uh, locating holes for our for our relief cuts down here at the back and the upper and lower flange. The tooling holes are located in exactly the right spot. Those will fit on the forming blocks without any problem. And now we've already tested this cutting template to make sure that it's the right dimensions by making some test parts and they turned out okay. So this is a good a good piece to start with. Uh, there's some little sanding and deburring that I've got to do on it to make sure everything's uh, you know usable with these scratches. but. Uh, for the most part that's going to be a really good part to start with and this one is too same same thing so make sure that your bit is sharp make sure that it's a carbide cutting bit you don't want to use any other kind of bit on aluminum it's just a wood cutting bit but you could, as long as it's a carbide bit you're you're good to cut aluminum with it at the with the thicknesses that we're using you get a nice uh, smooth edge all the way around very little deburring has to occur here and uh, it, it'll make a really nice template for you okay one final thing I want to say about cutting aluminum using uh, a router is that on your bit you have a little pilot bearing here that follows along the wood and depending on the kind of wood that you use or material that you use this can actually compress the wood a little bit and result in a wavy line so on my three quarter inch plywood cutting template here you can see right along this edge there's just a little bit of waviness to it little ripple all down the edge and that's just because the wood is very soft and as you're holding pressure up against your your router bit that pilot bearing can compress the wood edge just a little bit slightly so what you get in your final part is a slightly wavy line in the very edge of the part and that as you cut more and more of these it gets more and more pronounced uh, because each time you make a pass with the router across the cutting form, it'll make more and more ripples as that pilot bearing compresses into the soft wood. Now, if you're using a very hard material, uh, it isn't as likely to happen, but it's one of the reasons that you want to cut multiple sheets of material at once. So I think I used those cutting templates in particular four times. The first time was when I made my very first test piece to see if it needed any revisions. And then I used it three more times to make the remaining 11 rear ribs. And uh, <clears throat> the very last ribs had slightly more of that wavy line look to them uh, than any of the other ones. You can see here it's a little wavy. Now there's a couple options. One is to leave it in place and the other is to file it a little straighter. Because it's nice and rounded and smooth, even though it's wavy, I'm just going to leave it in place because the highest point on this edge is where you want the edge of your flange anyway. So if you start filing all this down to try to get it flat, you're going to start removing, you know, real material there. And you might end up with a flange that's only 16 millimeters instead of the 18 that you want overall. So this gives you the maximum amount of material still left on the flange after you form it, even though it might be a little wavy. And that's okay. As long as there's no sharp uh, divots, um, they're all very rounded and smooth. You're not going to have any stress riser problems and uh, you'll get a very nice uh, amount of material there even though it's slightly wavy. But that's the nature of plans building. Um, if this was cut out in a press shear or a stamping machine or laser cut or water jet cut, it would be absolutely perfect. There would be no wavy lines whatsoever. You probably wouldn't even need to deburr it really. You can see over here on the uh, back flange I've got some wavy lines and that's because of how the uh, material cut when I was trying to notch that out so I'm actually going to file this flat across because that is a stress riser there you can see a little bit closer this has got a little edge on it and it's kind of wiggly across here I'm just going to take a flat file and knock that down flat but because that's an edge I can do that for more information about the Zenith Stull CH750, please visit Zenith Aircraft Company online at www.zenithair.net. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Be sure to click on the notification bell to receive all the channel updates. For additional information on the project, check out my blog at gregsplane.blogspot.com. You can also contact me directly at gregsstollch750 at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching and good luck with your projects.